Hey, it's Suffering Student here, and today I'm going to show you this little program I had requested in one of the comments. Uh, let me just show you. It's a very simple program where I have a triangle, and then I have a drop shadow added to triangle. I then have some sliders that allows me to change the shadow based on the value of my sliders. So, first you have the radius, which is like the size of my drop shadow. And as you can see first, it's very close to the triangle, and then it's more wide. Then I can move the shadow as well on the X axis and the Y axis. And the interesting part, actually when we move the shadow, actually, so we can actually see how it works. If you just move it out and down a bit, the shadow is actually just a triangle, black triangle. And then when you change the radius, it gets more blurry. As you can see, so at first it's actually just, if the radius zero, it's actually just a black triangle. And then we add it a bit, it gets a bit more blurry. And then we can kind of, let's say, we want to make it look like it's floating. Something like that. But this is just a very simple program, and I'm going to go through the code, which is actually not too complicated. But let's go through it. And I'm going to add the source code in a gist in the link in the description. So I use scene builder. Inside scene builder, I just very simply have a triangle. I have three sliders and I have some text. And I just am able to change the minimum and the max value of my sliders inside scene builder, where my radius is between 0 and 100. My offsets are between minus 100 and 100. And for all of them, I'm showing the tick markers and tick labels which means like the, the ticks and the numbers. I am then just very simply inside my controller, having some IDs for my triangle and for my sliders. I am then creating a drop shadow, which is part of the scene.effect package. Inside initialize, which is the method that is called right after the windows unloading, I am adding my drop shadow to my triangle and I'm then doing what might be the most confusing part, but it's actually just very simple that I'm adding a listener to my sliders. So whenever I slide, the values are updated the second I slide, which allows me to have this gliding effect where I can see the effect when sliding, as well as moving it in real time. And how it's done is just simply having a slider dot value property add a listener then I have some parameters and inside one of the parameters we're overriding the change method so which means what are we doing every time the slider value and change then again we have some more different values shouldn't care too much about we have a lot of extra stuff I actually don't need but we need to have it because it's a part of the uh, slider and then inside this change method we are overriding and changing which is simply adding in this case that our drop shadow dot set radius is equal to our radius slider dot get value. And similarly with our x offset and our y offset, we're just changing the drop shadow dot set offset by the offset x slider dot get value. So I'm just gonna demonstrate how we actually create this listener that change whenever we change the slider. So first I will just have my slider. So let's just make a copy of this one. The offset of the x slider dot value property dot add listener. And then I will just simply go new and just pick the first one, change listener. And whenever I hit tap, everything is just imported directly. So we don't need to worry too much about all this stuff. Just know that inside our override it's where we're going to be putting whatever we're doing whenever we change our slider. And if we just have a look at our drop shadow set metrics, we are able, oh, right now I'm just using the set X, offset X and offset Y and the radius. We were all, we could also change the color, like giving it a color object. We could change the blur type. I don't know exactly how the blur type works, but you can have a look at that if you want. You can change the size, like the height and the width and the spread. But I hope you enjoyed this short 
walkthrough of a very simple but actually very very cool looking program where I'm able to update my shadow in real time. So if you did, please give a like and subscribe and wish you all a wonderful day.